Welcome. This is Megan with WCET. Thank you so much for joining us. We're surely going to have an exciting and informative webcast today with Dr. Robbie Melton. Today's webcast are smart devices and gadgets smarter than teachers? That is a very good question and Robbie will enlighten us. Thank you so much to Blackboard Collaborate for making this platform available. If you have any technical issues, please contact Blackboard directly as we're unable to provide technical support. As we go along today, please feel free to add your comments and questions into the chat box and we'll keep track of the questions as they come up. It's a great place to interact with the discussion. The participants don't have access to the mic, so do engage with us via the chat box. The webcast is being recorded and we will send you a link to the recorded presentation, the PowerPoint slides, and any resources that are shared. And I will also put a URL of the slide deck in the chat box as soon as we begin. As we go along, do enter your questions and Robbie will find places throughout the presentation to respond to those questions. And our moderator today is Michael Abiati, who is the executive director of WCT and a longtime friend of Dr. Melton. So I'd like to let Mike introduce Robbie. So Mike and Robbie, go ahead and click your talk buttons and we'll get started. Thank you, Megan. You, you've given me a very difficult task here. How do you introduce someone that needs no introduction? Uh, certainly, uh, it is an honor to, to work with Robbie Melton. Um, Robbie and her work with Tennessee Board of Regents and e-learning and her work with mobile apps and all kinds of other things are so valuable to our community have, have made Robbie truly a national treasure uh, in higher education. And so with that, uh, there's no one better to answer the question that's been posed today. So, Robbie, I'm going to turn it over to you and get you to answer the questions. Tell us about all these, these gadgets. Are they really smarter than teachers? And, Robbie, you'll need to click your talk button. Robbie, we can't, we can't hear you. We can see you via the video, but you still need to click your talk. And now, okay, oh, life is good. Hello, everyone. This is Robbie Melton. And you're in for a very interesting and exciting time. So let me give you my housekeeping rule, and that is life is good. You will have 50 minutes with me of looking at some of the most interesting, informative, maybe a little offbeat gadget in terms of education. So I want you to buckle up and I want you to start chatting because I have some amazing technology and I have some, hmm, I'm not sure technology. The purpose of this webinar is to look at all of these gadgets coming and boy do I have gadgets. But our goal is to look at the possibility for teaching, learning, and workforce development. In other words, we're going beyond the chalkboard. We're going where no educator has gone before, and that's behind the scenes of all of this technology. Now, here is my challenge to you all. I have 180 slides. Wow. Will I make it through? Hmm. Well, you have to stay with me to see. However, even coming to this webinar via Southwest Airlines, I would like to share with you something that's not on the PowerPoint, but look what I have in my hand. Yes, it's a gym shoe. Yes, it is your new gym shoe from Skechers and I'm going to get up very close. And some of you will remember the game Simon. Guess what? Now you can play Simon on your shoes. Will this be a distraction in education? You better believe it. And that's the reason we're here. We're here to look at the safety, the security, 
the educational value and the networking of all of these gadgets. So I'm ready. So let's start this PowerPoint. Oh, one more rule. As you know with any technology, there might be some little glitches, but you're my power people. So you'll know to say, hey, life is good. We'll make it through. So I'm going to go ahead and start my 120 slides to say, this is technology. Pull out your mobile devices. Pull them out from under the table. Take them out of your purse. We're going to app out for the next 47 minutes now. So with that, let's all together know that technology is a given and not a debate anymore because we all have the tools. I have a lot of tools. I had to get through security. I have my beautiful Windows phone, yes, the new one as of three months ago. And of course, I have my Samsung, but I have two of them. I have Samsung One, and I have the Samsung Edge. And yes, do anyone remember the Fire Phone? We purchased this phone last summer for $800. In eight weeks, it was 99 cents. That's the reason we're here, everyone. This technology is coming and going. And as an educational system, we don't have the money to try and think, will this work? So we have a strategic plan that I will share with you. So with that, I would like to let you know the more we all know about these devices, the more you will leave saying, I will no longer play Candy Crush. So let us warm up. And I have all of the information regarding mobile technology. And yes, it is personal. I just want you to try leaving your personal device at home or in a cab and see if your stress level will not just increase until it's back into your hands. So with that, I got some up-to-date data for you. This is going to be interesting. Can you believe that 90% of all American adults have a cell phone? Wow. Some of you can remember this type of phone. Remember the bag phone? Do you remember a party line? I'm sure Mike should remember a party line. We have moved from the bag phone to now some of the most amazing technology, but we're still calling it a phone. So with that, look at the next little paragraph. 67% of cell owners find themselves checking their phones even when the phone isn't ringing. In other words, we're addicted to this. And you need to know not only do we check it just to make sure 54% of us sleep with our phones. If you're a sleeper with that phone, hmm, I want to talk to you afterwards. I need to know what you're dreaming about because we know that people eat with this, walk with this, talk with this, and yes, sleep with this. So here's something that I want you to take away. In our new modern day classroom, workshop, and webinar, if I don't engage you all, 86% of you will start to text. In other words, you have basically 20 minutes or 20 seconds to engage your audience. So I'm going to engage you. You will see that at certain times, I will just say, hold up, we have an app alert. I will be giving you free apps, free as of when I pull them down, because I am an appologist. That is a new term that I made up to indicate that I study apps for education and workforce development. So with that, 
I want to share with you how we track and research our various technology. And yes, we use the Gardner Hype Cycle because these technologies are just rolling in. And you might have the best phone today, but by tonight, it's outdated. So we track the use for education, for workforce, and the impact of all of these gadgets for education. So let me just start off by sharing with you a new device that I just received to give you a walkthrough of how we handle these devices. I have a device called Telescope, and please know that I will share all of these resources with you. This is a device, and I'm going to get up very close, where you can conduct ear exams from your home or school. And you see the device right here, and it fits right there on your phone. Can you imagine you're able to conduct a medical hearing exam using your phone? So you need to know before we deploy any of these devices, you see that big FDA? Not only FDA, but OSHA safety and security, we want to make sure that these things coming in, whether they're watches, yes, smart earrings too, that they're safe for us. So before we let any of these things go, please know that we have a strategic plan on checking. However, let's look at the impact of all of this. This slide should just make you laugh because that's what you see all the time, people walking around with their mobile devices. And as you hear from the background, I have so many devices going on, but no one's paying attention. So we have the new, what we call zombie of walking dead, and that's using your phone. And again, wherever you go, whether it's a restaurant, a doctor's office, or even your own home, this is what you will see. So let me give you some quick research. In terms of using our phones, you see playing games, number one. However, after this webinar, you're going to have a new attitude because we're going to increase the educational and workforce use of these mobile devices. We're going to go past 20. My goal is to see us use these as effective teaching and learning tools. So since Angry Birds is still number one, and some of you are still stuck on certain levels, please know that I have added a cheat sheet. But let me use this for a teachable moment. How is it, everyone, that ain't not only Angry Birds, but Candy Crush, a preschool game can just grab us where we can't let it go. My goal for you all is to have that same type of energy and attitude regarding education. I want my students to look at math and say, I need a cheat sheet. I'm stuck. I need help. I'm on level 39 versus Candy Crush. So with that, we have taken a proactive attitude, and behavior to say we're going to look at all gadgets that will align themselves with these phones to improve and enhance teaching and learning. So with that, I'm going to give you a case study. And again, I say this respectfully because when we hear older institutions like the Pope using mobile devices, some of us might go, okay, I can see them reading, but no, they went a next step, everyone, and that's what I want you to do. Look at the possibilities of using these devices beyond just reading. Well, here's what you need to know. Many people, because we're so busy, do not have time to go to confession. So guess what? Yes, 
they turn the phone into a confession booth. There is an app that will allow you to use your phone to confess. And before you go, oh, no, I'm going to say, oh, yes, because the research we have, participation went up. And by the way, it is very well designed. I was able to go in, identify all of my sins. They were aligned to the various verses, and they even have a hotline. So before you start going, oh, no, Robbie, I'm going to go think out of the box. So with that, we know our students have all of these devices. So let us lead and learn and find out the possibilities. So as we go through, you need to know we are a BYOD. What does that mean? You bring your own devices. Boy, do I have devices. I got so many devices. I have old, new, and some that I can't even name. Why? Because on behalf of the Tennessee Board of Regents, we have 250,000 students. And guess what? They will all bring their own device, even devices we didn't anticipate, such as the Nintendo? I thought this was for young kids. On behalf of our IT staff, yes, we have gaming consoles hooked up to our network. We even have devices that have no name. So with that being a BYOD, let us move forward to let you know that there's an app for everything. And here's your first app. Are you ready? And I'm going to put it right here in the chat. Many of you will remember, if you are over 40, in the yesteryears, when you would like a book, you had a bookmobile. It was a car or a truck. And in this case, how about a pack pack of books for us to find out where we can get more books. Well, on your device, regardless of what you have, you have, there is an app called Kobo, K-O-B-O, -O, and it's free. And what will it do? It will give you 2.8 million books right there on your device. You all should be going, oh my gosh, because we're educators. Books are us. And here you have an app that will give you 2.8 free million books. So again, that's Kobo. You'll see 1.8. Nope, that's a typo. It's 2.8. So you have enough reading now to take you through a lifetime. And with that, you know the possibilities of reading on a mobile device. Now again, there must be a balance. There are some people who prefer hard copies. There are some people, like Robbie, who cannot spell, must have a mobile device to read. Why? Because you can touch a word and instantly a dictionary will come up, search. So again, life is good. So with all of that, ladies and gentlemen, you know what's going to happen tomorrow. In fact, hmm, how about in maybe 12 hours? Apple will release their iWatch. And lines are already forming for an iWatch. We didn't even know a watch could be an eye, but it's an iWatch. On behalf of our strategic plan for the Tennessee Border Region, we share with our 50 campuses to hold. Don't do it. We purchase a sampling of the technology, we're going to purchase six iWatches and strategically place them into programs on campuses so people can check it out. It's more than just the height. Again, a reminder, safety, security, networking, and what's the function? So these devices are not cheap anymore. Some of you have already planned to order the iWatch for $10,000. I want to talk to you afterwards. So again, I have watches. I have the Samsung watch. I also have 
um, the Microsoft coming up. And I have a couple of more watches around here. But again, that's the big thing. Uh-oh, app alert. Now, let me share something with you about Word Lens. This is a fantastic app, and it's free. And what are you able to do? You take anything printed, hold up your device, it instantly transcribes it. However, Google just purchased this company, so it might be online or it might not. But if you email me, I'm working with the company to make sure that you get a code. That's why you love this workshop. So moving on from our app alert, how about our smart gadgets? And I'm going to start with mobile health. Yes, everyone. We have iDoctor on your phone. You're able to use your phone now as a diagnostic tool. You now see me with my blood pressure. Not only do I have a blood pressure that hooks right in with my phone, I also have a smart stethoscope back here. And if you look at your slide, not only will you see a stethoscope, you see various lenses. Now, do they work? That's where we come in. We're the researchers. We have to make sure that they're safe, networked properly, and that they're going to give us reliable results. So with that, I want you to know we have teams around the world. We're also working with Merlot with our peer-reviewed apps. We also have Appathon. So as we go through, please know we are strategic about how we use these projects. App Alert, here's another app that you will like, and it is called Health Map. What is Health Map? Just like I'm traveling now, and by the way, I live in Nashville, Tennessee, but I'm in Austin, Texas. You know what I do? I take my phone, I click on health alert. Why? Because it will let me know of all of the contagious diseases around me in a 50 miles area. Like bed bugs, here I'm in my hotel, I've already checked it out, no bed bugs. Why? App alert. Now, let's get serious about this. Where is this information coming? Well, App Alert works with the Center for Disease Control, but we have to monitor to make sure that the information that we're sharing, what is factual. So with that, you have your eye doctor, and when you want in the future, you need an eye exam, ah, 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 you don't have to go. You'll be able to use your phone. Again, many of these are in the beta area or the concept, but not this one. Do you know two years ago people laughed at me when I said, you too can use your phone as an ultrasound tool. Oh, yes. And people said, mm, she's lost her mind. Well, I get the last laugh because, as you see, FDA approved. Here it is. You too can turn your phone into an ultrasound tool for $7,854. So with that, I also want you to know that over in other countries, they're using PEEK, P-E-E-K, as a tool. You put it on your phone, and you're able to diagnose eye diseases. Now let's stop and take a breath here. Did I not say we're using these and they've been approved by the FDA on helping with medical? Hmm. I think that's a little bit more than Candy Crush that we need to be using these devices. So with that, we have here 285 million people worldwide are visually impaired. And thus, here comes your phone to help in diagnosing various problems, as well as turning your phone into a hearing aid. Resound has worked with many of the developers, especially iOS, Apple, in turning your phone into a full hearing aid. And yes, 
here is an app whereby all you have to do is type or speak, and it will sign for you. To make sure you're paying attention to this webcast, if you put your name in the chat, I'll send you this app because this one is a paid app. Hmm. But it's a powerful app. It's not going to take the place of a professional translator, but it will help in just informal conversations. So with that, again, we make sure things are safe and all of those good things, but let's rock and roll. Here's a new concept coming up. You got a fever? We got an app for that. Yes, you're now able to take your phone, put it on your head, and find out if you have a fever. Does it work? We're not sure. This is one that's just hit out. And yes, we have all of your apps and devices. And again, we work with our Allied Health Program and Nursing Program. We're going to like this one. You see that tattoo? Oh, yeah. Do you think a tattoo can actually tell your vitals? Well, you see me moving over. Why? Because I got the tattoo, and here it is. And if you had the app, and I had already had this on, guess what? You too should be able to read my vitals to see why Southwest Airlines had me almost delayed to the point of no webinar. So I got my tattoo on. Hmm. No, I'm not going to give you the code for the app so you can read my vitals, but it's out there. So moving on with that, we have some other devices coming in. Now here is a, a smart pen hmm, to let you know when someone in your family is having an attack. That is one that we're going to look at the possibility. I like this one, vein finders. You go to the doctor, they tie you up, they beat your arm, you squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Not anymore. You got a vein finder. You will put this over your arm, and it will find the open vein for you. And, of course, we have x-rays and smart bottles and smart pills. And we have 3D printing coming in and sensor dome. Do you know with your phone, you can now pick up gases? Yes. Workforce development. And it works. On behalf of the Tennessee College of Applied Technology, I have 27 centers that work with me in testing out mobile devices and gadgets and tools and apps for the workforce and careers. Now, here's one that I'm not happy with. There are some devices that I go, okay, it's called I Swim Band. And what it's supposed to do, you put the band on. And if your child is drowning, it will let you know. Everyone, you need to be there with your child, not depending on a band to let you know while you're in there watching soap operas. No. So some of these technologies, we have to look at age appropriateness, uh, all of the caution, because this will not replace you being there with your child in a pool. So again, with workforce, we have various tools. Now this one almost had me in prison. It's called Yellow Jacket Stun Gun. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you too can stun people with your phone. And it works. And it's horrible. It's not safe. And I called in. And so don't even try the stun gun as your phone. Ha, ah, here's something new. Some of you are drinking water right now, but you're not drinking smart water. We have a new type of security called smart water security, where you're able to put your information on your device, and with this water, you can identify it. Ah, oh, you need to just stay tuned for this one. So all of our homes are connected now. Do you know right now? I can call my home. I can look at my house. but. I got a smart light bulb. Do you have a smart light bulb? How many educators will it take to program, you heard me, 
program a light bulb. Wow. Please know this is called the Internet of Things to Come. This will send data not only with this device, all of the things we touch, where we go, will be connected. So with that, I want to share with you, I saw it, yes, Oak Ridge, Tennessee. We took a team of 50 to see one of the first 3D printed cars. You want a Jag? Guess what? One day you'll 3D print that baby right into your garage. Yes, 3D printing is here. Not only the body, but you're able to use metals and plastic and, yes, food and living cells. So, again, we have handy tools, but guess what? You see all of those phones? Here's a new phone, concept phone coming up. Yes, she's in the bathtub. She has a bracelet on. And when she wants to use her phone, all she has to do is switch her wrist and the phone will come. And it's called skin touch. That's your new term, skin touch. You're able to touch your skin and it interacts. So no more all of these hard phones use your skin. And with that hologram, you're going to love this because guess what I have? I got it two days ago. It is a hologram. Yes. Hmm. What's the value for teaching and learning? I don't know. I need your help because we have this amazing technology coming, but we need teams to look at the possibilities. So with the hologram, ah, ladies and gentlemen, you can sniff your phone. Yes, I have Fenty. And yes, we have seven cents. Yes, you want bacon? You want to smell bacon? Wow, you now can do that. I wonder if they're going to use Fenty for the ad program. That's a little joke now. You're supposed to be laughing. So with bacon and, oh, smart planning. Oh, I have it here. You don't know how to garden. Don't worry about it anymore. You got what? You got eye plant. I plant, you put it in the ground, and it will tell you, give me water, please, give me sunlight. So all of these things are coming. Where's the value for teaching and learning? Do we just throw everything out and just depend on our smart devices? I need to know how to plant, trust me. I need to know that a seed goes into the ground, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why... We have to look at what's out there and help people to understand we're not giving up education. We need it to understand these gadgets. Ah, look at this one. You'll be able to have sensory touches on your phone, not only on your phone, the Oculus. Oh, my gosh. Some of you need to experience the Oculus. It costs $400. I got good news. Yes, you too can have an Oculus. Now, watch this. I was able to get 10 of these. You put your phone, yes, your phone, inside here, and it will give you basically the same sensation as the Oculus. So the first 10 people that put their name in the chat and your email, or I'm sure Megan has your email, I will send you a cardboard Oculus. You're going to love it. And why am I sending this to you? Because I need you to see the educational value. I need for you to put them on. Don't walk with them. Put them on and see what kind of content do we have. Will this make Education come alive. I don't know. I need someone to put these on and test them out. And, yes, I will send you one free, no charge, the Oculus. Moving on, because you know I have all those slides. Google Glasses. Ah, what happened to Google Glasses? Everyone, we were fighting. We were trying to kill each other. We were running into trees over our Google Glasses. And now they're no more. Don't believe the hype. They're not going anywhere. This is an amazing piece of technology. It's a computer sitting over your eye. 
a computer sitting over your eye. I'm still paying for my gateway, the one that looks like a cow computer this large, and here I have a computer over my eye. We'll talk about that later. So with that, ah, we have Google Contact. Yes, look at me. Before you say never, I want you to think of the possibility. With this contact, you have the capability of monitoring your glucose level in your tears. Let me break it down to you. You know anyone who's diabetic? You know anyone who has to pick their, prick that finger all the time? Guess what? With that contact, no more pricking, no more blood. It reads your blood, I mean your tear level. Hmm, the possibilities are there. So with that, wearables, oh! Yes, I am wearable down. I have wearable earrings. I have wearable clothes. And this is for Mike. I just got this yesterday. It's your new bionic shirt. And here it is. But look at the label. It comes with a warning label. Would you wear something that had a label like caution? And you see that? Would you not wonder? Hmm. But here it is. And what will this do? Well, when you're working out, you don't have to stop and take your pulse. Your personal coach or your friend, your family, or whoever can walk by with their mobile device and they can read all of your signs, your heart rate, and the whole nine yards. Yes. Yes. Wearables are in the Internet of Things. So with that, we're going to move right into, again, all of our 3D printing. Yes, when you go to the dentist's office, you need a tooth. You remember in the old days you used to have to wait? They used to put a, a replacement, a fake one there. And then the next thing you knew, two weeks later, you had to go back. Uh-uh-uh, 3D printing. You'll be able to sit there for two hours. You need a tooth? Here's a tooth. Welcome to technology. So with that, I want you to know some of the new gadgets out there. How about the smart luggage? When it's lost, you'll be able to find it. When you get it back, that's another story. But we got smart luggage coming. And the I tried. On behalf of my friend P PK from Penn State, he tried this out for me, and it works. You're able to use that device to operate your computer with your eye movement. But check this one out. Pizza Hut. Can you imagine Pizza Hut? Yeah. With Pizza Hut, they're trying out a new technology. It's called, what are you thinking? So when you have a menu and you're trying to decide, oh, what am I going to order for my pizza? They have this technology that as you scan the menu, where your eyes stop indicates that's what you want. Hmm. They don't know me. I would have the whole store because my eyes stop at everything. But how about a smart bed, everyone? Don't even go there. You just know it's a smart bed. It's letting everyone know what you're doing. And Amazon Echo. So when you order something, they're going to use all of these drones and all of those good things. Do I have drones? You better believe I have drones. I have drones here. I have drones there. They fly all over in the whole nine yards. So what's the value for teaching and learning? That's our job to find out. So with that, we now have, I love this one because I don't cook. Well, I don't have to cook anymore. Why? Because now I have perfect bait. It's a smart bowl. Well, if I'm creating something like a recipe or whatever, and I'm supposed to have two eggs. Guess what? Could have let me know. I only had one. Wow. Hmm. Let me think of possibility of that. Because not only do I have a smart board, I also have a smart egg carton. 
Where's my smart A carton? Where's my smart A carton? Yes, you know I have one. If I don't cook, I better have a smart A carton because it lets me know when I need eggs. Oh, yes, I said it. I have a smart A carton to let me know at any time, any day, 24-7, how many eggs I have in my refrigerator. Stop it. Let us start looking at this technology of smart things for education and workforce purposes. What could be the possibility of this technology? How about to determine how old the eggs? Now, you know I don't cook. I could have eggs in there from 10 years ago. Someone will become sick. Let the technology pick up E. coli bacteria. And yes, that's what's going to happen. So with all of that, you know I got a smart frying pan. It lets me know when my food's burning. Wow. Come on, everybody. Got to have more than it's going to let me know when it's burning. You know when it's burning is when your house is on fire. So with that, how about smart chopsticks? Hmm. However, before you laugh, it works. They're working on it where when you put your chopsticks down in your food, it will let you know any type of bacteria, how old, whatever, whatever. Yes, they're working on that now, smart chopsticks. And, oh, you know this is mine. You know this is called my smart fork. And where is my smart fork? It's somewhere over here. And what is it? When you eat too quickly, it'll let you know. It'll vibrate. It will say you need to slow down. For $99, guess what? I'll let you know you need to slow it down. We have to look at this technology and I'm trying to, did I eat my fork? Well, it's somewhere around here. It'll show up because it is what? A smart fork. So as we go to our next item, please note that we now have coming up, and yes, I have all of my little gadgets going on, all the fitness craze. Oh, we love the Fitbit, the Jaws, and whatever. But are you walking any faster? It's letting us know real time. So here I have all of my little Fitbits. I got all my little sensor socks. Yes, I got Google. Look, I got smart shoes. And what is it saying to me? I need to walk more. We need to look at the possibilities of all of this. So with that, ah, check this one out. Gobi is the first and only wearable device that automatically measures the calories you consume and burn. Wow, did you all know that Krispy Kreme has an app that when the hot light comes on, it will light up on your phone? Why don't we have that for education? I want my students' phone to light up. You have homework. But no, we have this type of technology. That's why I need you all to be on this. Okay, this is it, everyone. I have a problem with this one. Someone needs to help me. It's called Belty. It's a smart belt. And you put it on, and if you eat too much, it loosens up. Eighty dollars. You eat too much, and where's my, where is my smart fork? My smart fork and spoon should have told me I was eating too fast and too much, so now I've got my belty on, and just in case, as a backup, belty will loosen up to let me know, hmm, you know, you've been eating too much. We have to stop spending and wasting money on technology for entertainment and look at technology for teaching and learning. But that starts with educators being willing to dive down and say, let's look at the possibilities. So with that, hi, we got a smart tooth here. What's a smart tooth? Well, if you're on a diet or you're smoking, 
and you swore you would never do that again, Smart Tooth will let people know you had an M&M. Oh, yes. So, again, with all of these gadgets, oh, oh, how about you need to brush? We got a Smart Tooth brush. Yes, we do. Ah, we even have a Smart Basketball, Baseball, Soccer Ball, Bowling Ball. This ball talks to you. Again, I don't cook and I don't play basketball. But, boy, when I'm using that ball, that ball will say, palm higher, throws. Yes, with the possibility for teaching and learning. Look at disabilities. Look at all of this amazing technology. But we're playing games. Ah, here is something that I want you to kind of reflect on. A student came up with the thought, why not have smart helmets? so that when students are playing football or other contact sports and they hit their head, it will instantly let not only the coach but the doctors on and on, and it could measure the impact. This is why you're here on this webinar. This is where you think the amazement of this technology and what you can do to enhance education, to save lives, but guess what I got? <laughs> Smart fish. You want to fish, and you've been sitting there for five hours, no fish, <laughs> you need fish finder. Oh, yes. We now have the technology that you just put that little lure right there on your rod or reel, and it will let you know where they are. Now, some of you might say, uh-uh, that's cheating. Well, it's your whole livelihood based around catching fish. You might think a little different about that. So as we move on with the Internet of Things and all of the things that will be connected, and I mean everything will be connected, I want you to know not only do we have a smart bed? We have a smart hospital bed. Those days of where they used to wake you up at 3 in the morning, over. We've got the technology that as you are in that bed, you see it's reading your vital signs on and off. And again, these are in beta, but okay. Remember, people use their phones when they go to the restroom. Now we got a Wi-Fi toilet. Come on, help me with this one. We have a Wi-Fi toilet, yes. And you'll start seeing signs to say this toilet is Wi-Fi able. Yes. Well, let's look at the possibilities before you just fall out of your seat laughing. How about smart toilets in the hospital? Remember those days where you went to the toilet and then they had to have someone to come in and take what you have and then analyze it? Those days are over. Ladies and gentlemen, you got smart toilets. When you go to the restroom, it will analyze what you put in and send it directly to your doctor. That's why you have to be careful when you have people to visit you in a hospital and they use your restroom. So all of that, you know I got those Google shoes coming. Oh yes. Click your heels three times, you'll be back in Kansas. Mike. Well, Look at the possibilities for these shoes, for physical therapy, and on and on. It's up to us as educators to shape this technology, to evaluate it, to look at best practices. These are tools. These are not teachers. They're not smarter than you unless you allow them to be. So with that, I got my smart clothes and all of my Fitbits. And did you know? Yes. Smart eyelashes. Wow. Hmm. I'm stuck. Smart fingernails? What will they do? I mean, I don't know. I'm stuck. Eyelashes? Do I do more cold with it? I don't know. I need your help. Eye robot? Yeah. I need one of those to help clean my house. And as you know, Oprah was gave away what? Many of them. And they were just back in your house, yes. And with that, ah, I can't wait for this one. What's up? What's up is in beta right now, 
And you know how when we all go to conferences, we look around and we go and go, I'm not a Jew. What will I do? So you all huddle around that little electric outlet to get that power. Day's over. We got what's up coming and other technology where you walk right into a room and it starts charging. You don't have to plug in. You don't have to put it down on a special surface. It just starts to charge. But we want that to be safe. I don't want to walk in and, and then walk out green. So again, with emerging technology and gadgets, we get to see some of the good, the bad, and wow, I'm still thinking about the purpose for this. But it's all for the sake of looking how we can modify, adapt, align, teach, and learn with these tools. So when you get a chance, I want you to go to YouTube and just click on Verizon Power for Answers. You will now see where all of these little tools that I talked about are actually put in an educational environment. And we have various institutions around Tennessee, like Washington State, that will step up and help us to look at all of these devices. And yes, this is my claim to fame. I created a website called Appopedia, where I curate mobile apps from preschool to careers on all devices. And my claim to fame is you should never have to look for an app. Why? Because I finally fixed the app alert. You go in, you type in that you have an iOS, you're studying nuclear medicine, and you're doing that on the junior high school level. Well, anytime I find apps with those variables, you automatically receive an email of those apps. Life is good. And remember, I, I created it, so if it's kind of quirky, just, you know, life is good. All that to say, everyone, can you believe I went through 137 slides? And it's 152. And it's time for questions because I didn't share with you. Now we have little PJs. Yes, here's the little PJ. And you take your mobile device, you hold it over the PJ, and it sings lullabies. It reads bedtime story. I want teaching clothes. I want to be able to walk down the hall of academia and people wave their device over me and some math problems will jump out. How about a little history lesson? I want teaching clothes. So, again, I have concluded Robbie, my this is Monica. I, I have one question. And all of my uh, if we look gadgets, across the nation, so all of the major questions? sectors of our economy are pretty excited about the Internet of Things and they've developed strategies to deal with the Internet of Things. Why is education lagging behind relative to having a strategy for dealing with IoT? And what should we do as educators to bring IoT to the forefront? Mike, thank you for that, and I did not pay him for that. Ladies and gentlemen, the Internet of Things is a whole revolution of regarding information and how we use information. It gives us real-time, on-demand data that we can now use to reshape things, uh, how to teach. Mike, to answer that question, and this is by Robbie, I think people are afraid. When you hear that you're connected, people are going, oh, no, I don't want to be connected. But you are connected. You're breathing on the earth. We're all connected. And if we look at a strategic plan on how to use this for the good of education, and I'll give you a good um, case study that we have right now going on in Tennessee. We have a wild hog, yes, hog, like the animal, problem. I mean, it's severe. Well, with the Internet of Things, Mike, Verizon was able to go in, work out a gate, a smart gate where after a number of those wild hogs will get into the gate, instead of people having to get up 2 o'clock in the morning to go and get the hogs and all of that good stuff, no, the Internet of Things will let you know when those um, hogs are coming, how many are there, and you don't even have to get out of your bed. My point is, Mike, 
we tend to stop things that we don't know about. But everyone on this call are our superstars. We're going to shape the Internet of Things for education. Very good. Thank you. Megan, do you have any other questions? No, I just wanted to commend Robbie because although I know she was very capable, I, I did hesitate when I saw her slide deck come through that she was going to be able to get through all those slides. And she did it with props. So wonderful job, Robbie, as always. I'll go ahead and move through the rest of the slides. But if you do have any questions, comments, or if you have favorite apps to share, go ahead and enter them into the chat box while we conclude here. If this is your first webcast with WCET, visit our website and learn more about us. We have a lot of programs and events that you, you would probably benefit from. Uh, we have a leadership summit coming up in Santa Fe, New Mexico on adaptive learning. And our annual meeting call for proposals will be going out very soon within the next week or so. So be thinking about ideas you want to share at our annual meeting in Denver this November. All of our recorded webcasts are available on the WCET website, and I'll be posting a link as well as sending that out to you within the next week. Thank you to our technology provider, Blackboard Collaborate. Thank you to our WCET supporting members for their extra support of the organization and our continued work. Thank you, WCET annual sponsors, Blackboard, Pearson, Vital Source. And thank you so much to Robbie for being with us today. I know she has a, a lot of places she needs to be at once, and I really appreciate her carving time out to be with us today. And Robbie, you always do such a wonderful job of being very engaging and keeping us up to date with all the cool things on the horizon. So thank you, Robbie, and thank you, Mike, for being our moderator today. It's my pleasure, Megan. Life is good.